Hello to everyone watching. Welcome to another episode of the Revolutionize STEM Women in STEM webinar series. Today we are joined by Marissa Delgado, who is not only a professional in the data science field, but she is also a model, Miss Earth New York 2021, and a STEMinist. Marissa went from graduating last year with a Bachelor of Science in Technology and Information Management from the University of California, Santa Cruz, to now being a data scientist working on product analytics at Etsy and working as a professional model with brands like Cosmopolitan, L'Oreal, Dr. Jart, and more. She has also been part of the Society of Women Engineers and has collaborated with women in STEM communities, such as Girls Who Code as a mentor. Hello, everybody. Once again, welcome. Um, you can turn on your camera if you feel, feel comfortable with that. Um, we would love to see your beautiful faces <laughs> and get to know each other. Keep in mind, this is a really safe space for everybody. And just so this is a little bit more dynamic and we can see everybody's reactions, it will be great if you could please turn on your video. Um, it just um, if you feel comfortable with it. Um, hello, Marisa, how are you doing? I'm good. Are you Karina? Yeah. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. How's your Friday going? Um, it's going pretty well, a little bit hectic over the place, but <laughs> you know, that's life almost all the time. <laughs> How's your Friday going? Um, well, hopefully you get to rest on the weekend, um, but my Friday's going pretty well. I had a focus day today, so no meetings. It's nice. Oh my God, that's so nice. <laughs> Um, so we are waiting a little bit. Um, once again, if anybody would like to um, open your cameras just so we can meet you guys and get to know you a little better, it would be great, amazing. Uh, just if you feel comfortable with it, we'll start in a couple of minutes. We're still waiting for some people. Maybe while we wait for more people to join, uh, some of you guys, whoever wants to participate, I don't know, a little icebreaker, like, how's your day going? How are you feeling? Nobody wants to be an icebreaker. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so I think we can start with the people we have right now. And if somebody else joined, they, they can just get a little caught with what we're doing. So hi, everyone. Welcome to Revolutionize the Science webinar with the amazing Marisa Delgado. Uh, she is a data scientist um, at Etsy and also a model working with multiple brands. Uh, my name is Karina. Um, and I am the director of outreach for Revolutionize STEM. Um, and yeah, I don't know if Marisa, would you like to start with your presentation whenever you feel comfortable with it? Go ahead. Yeah, I had a presentation, a short presentation prepared, but I can't share my screen. Um, I usually use Google Meets, but would you be able to grant me permission? 
I'm going to do so right now. I'm sorry, I kind of forget about that. <laughs> I think maybe you should be able to do so now. Yes. Um, Oh, is it is my screen shared yet? No, right? No, not yet. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, sorry. I like mostly use Google Meets. Okay. Hope. Oh, it's not letting me. Like I have to exit out of Zoom. Can I send you the link to my presentation? Yeah, of course. Okay. And can you remind me your email again? I'll just share it with you. I'm sorry, what? Uh, and what was your email again? Oh yeah, I'll put it in the chat. But yeah, while I get set up, um, I'd also like to learn more about revolutionized STEM um, because I didn't really get too much of the background of it, like how you guys started and of course. <laughs> I don't know if maybe Daphne can give you a little bit more of the background. Uh, she's the founder of revolutionized STEM, so maybe she can give you a little bit more info about that. Daphne, would you like to go ahead? Maybe not. Okay, I just thought. I set you up as the host, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. But yeah, I mostly use Google, Google Meet. That's why um, I'm having a little trouble, but hello, Joshna. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, let me know if you can't get it set up, the slide set up. I could just go oh. off memory, but cool. And then I'll just let you know when to change slide. Okay, is it showing now? Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you guys for bearing with us. But hello, I'm Marisa Delgado. I'm a data scientist at Etsy. I'm a fashion model represented in New York and San Francisco, and I'm an advocate for women in STEM. Next slide. Uh, so a little bit more about me. I was born and raised in San Jose, California. And five years ago, when I was scouted by my modeling agency, I moved to New York City to pursue modeling full time. I'm so grateful for that experience. I grew to be more independent and also I accomplished goals I never thought were possible for me. I modeled for clients such as L'Oreal, H&M, American Eagle, Lululemon. Um, I walked to New York Fashion Week for two seasons, and I also have been featured in magazines like Cosmopolitan and Seventeen Magazine. Um, so I'm so grateful for 
um, that part of my journey. Um, simultaneously, I was also a part-time student. Last year, I graduated with my Bachelor's of Science in Information Technology from UC Santa Cruz. Um, and currently, I'm working as a data scientist at Etsy. If you guys don't know what Etsy is, Etsy is a global uh, e-commerce platform that specializes in handmade vintage items and crafting supplies. Um, and I'm working on their product analytics team, making it effortless for over 4 million sellers to grow their small business on Etsy. Um, and fun fact, um, over 80% of Etsy's sellers are women, so it's great to support um, not only small businesses, but also women-owned businesses. And outside of work, I mentor college-age girls like yourselves through Girls Who Code. I compete in pageants. Um, it's one of my passions, and I'm currently the Miss New York Earth USA. I love being active in my community and sharing um, more about women in STEM on a national level. Um, and I also love to cook vegan recipes. So if you guys have any plant-friendly recipes, recipes, please send them my way. Um, but I'm most passionate about diversifying STEM and promoting the field. Next slide, please. So let's first define what a STEMinist is um, and the reason why we need them. Uh, women make up only 28% 20, of the workforce in STEM with only 26% of computing related degrees held by women. Um, and the reason why we need STEMinists is um, because they're an advocate for increasing the presence of women in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, basically, STEMinism is applying um, feminism to STEM fields to uh, call out gender and racial inequalities in STEM. Next slide, please. So what do advocates for women in STEM do? First, they normalize being feminine and having a good professional career in STEM. I define a woman of the 21st century as a woman who is not only confident in herself, beautiful, empowering, but also someone who is very intelligent. And I love that girls can not only embrace their femininity, but also embrace that nerdy side of themselves. Growing up, I loved being on stage, but I also really excelled in my science and math classes. Um, so I love that I could do both. Um, the next thing that we do is share our experiences of being the only woman in a male dominated field. Um, I love doing uh, talking events like th speaking events like this, um, so that I could just share how empowering it is to take up space in a male dominated field, share how I've overcome challenges or microaggressions, um, so that we can increase and retain more women in the field. Plus having more women in STEM in turn closes the um, gender wage gap in STEM. And the third thing that I do as a STEMinist is increase visibility of women in STEM role models. There's a lack of role models. And honestly, I just wanna see more women when I work into the office. I was very fortunate that my first job out of college was at Etsy where my first manager was a woman, her boss was a woman, the C, the CMO and the CPO um, are both women. Um, and it's just really empowering to see that representation in a big tech company. Um, next slide, please. And speaking of one of my favorite uh, women in STEM role models, Tracy Cho, is a, is a founder, CEO, and former software engineer at Pinterest, who is most well known for her work pushing for diversity in, diversity in tech. Um, I actually met her at a woman in tech panel at my very first hackathon when I was a senior in high school. And it's great to see her now. She was just named one of Time Magazine's 
uh, Woman of the Year. Um, and she's just out here representing us women in STEM. Um, this is a quote from her, one of my favorite quotes from her, saying how the more influential technology becomes, the more impactful it is to have the people building the products and services be demographically representative of the people using it. Just let that sink in. And um, it, for me, I basically interpret it as that we have to recognize the unrepresented paradigms and underrepresented um, space um, paradigms of our society and encourage young girls to take up more space in tech. Next slide, please. And if you want to keep in touch, you can add me on LinkedIn here. And here is my Instagram. But I believe now we are going into the um, interview portion of today. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Marisa, for giving uh, this little introduction about yourself. Um, it really was amazing to hear your story. I feel like even though I'm not one to be in the world of STEM, I experienced it last year and seeing the gender gap was something that kind of made me rethink how we uh, teach and how we help women pursue uh, careers in STEM. It really made me kind of question those structures. So to move forward with the interview, I would love to ask you the first question. Um, did you always know you wanted to pursue a career in STEM or how did that life path start to come into mind? Yeah, like I said before, I always excelled in my math and science classes. So I knew it was something that I wanted to pursue. But also my dad is an infra director of infrastructure. So he works in the cloud. I know a tech buzzword, but um, he would quiz me at the dinner table about like Java data structures and, vari and variables and um, he was such an instrumental part in inspiring me to pursue a career in technology. Um, and then it wasn't until I went to Grace Hopper Celebration, which is the largest gathering of women technologists um, in the world. So I really um, advise you guys to sign up for that. I believe it's like virtual and free this year, um, but I never knew about the career of data scientist until I went there. It's the, it's the um, track, the career track that interested me the most. So I went to all the data science sessions at Grace Hopper um, in 2018. And um, I just left that conference really inspired. And um, yeah, that's how I started my journey. That's so interesting. Now, Jashna, would you like to ask the next question? Oh yeah, sure. Also your experiences sound absolutely amazing. But in your own words, how would you describe data science? In my own words, so I love my job because, um, well, uh, when I was in college, I first started out as a CS degree and thought that the only career choice for me was to be a software engineer um, until I learned about data science. Um, and data science is pretty much the integration of business and also um, computer science. I, I love my job because I get to be technical, but I also get to um, get to influence um, business decisions and make sure that the company is um, data driven. That's amazing. I honestly didn't really understand what data science meant. And I don't know, it just sounds so interesting. <laughs> um, next up, I would like to ask you, how will you describe your experience in college? Because I feel like sometimes that's something that really stresses out uh, girls or younger people who are trying to pursue a career in STEM, how is your college experience going to be like? 
And could you please tell us a little more about a day in your life, specifically when you were like back in college? Okay, so to answer your first question, um, I, so I went to UC Santa Cruz, but I transferred to UC Santa Cruz um, as a CS degree. And I would, if there's anything you take away from this question is that I, that there's so much power in community. Uh, when I first um, transferred to UC Santa Cruz, I didn't really have that community of women um, that understood what I was going through um, until that was until I joined Society of Women Engineers and Girls Who Code College Loops. Um, so try to look for clubs like that on campus. Um, it not only makes your life more enjoyable, but also like the quality of your work. Um, and it motivated me to stay in STEM. Um, a day in the life as um, an engineering student, um, well, my experience is very unique because I went to school during COVID. So um, I, I have a reel on my Instagram showing a day in the life of an engineering student and model. Um, you can watch that. But when I was in New York, I would roll out of bed and watch my um, lectures. Um, and then if I had like a photo shoot that day, then I would attend. But I really like the flexibility of Zoom University. Um, so that was how the day of my life was. Uh, lots of lots of all-nighters, um, but it was definitely worth it. Why did you decide to pursue tech and information management instead of computer science? Yeah, like I said before, um, I didn't want to end up doing software engineering because I just didn't want to code all day at my job. Like realistically, I just did not want to code all day. Um, and I love that I have that balance as a data scientist. Um, so for example, like two weeks ago, I gave a presentation at an all hands leading up to that, to that presentation. I was coding all day and um, querying through um, our data and writing analyses. Um, but right now I'm doing a lot of dashboarding, which doesn't require coding. Um, so I love that balance. And I also, and I also get to work with the stakeholders to brainstorm features and just be a part of the pr uh, process um, for product. All right. Um, so kind of an interesting question. How did you first feel when you entered into an environment that was mainly male dominated and how did you, you know, navigate that? Uh, like I said before, I navigated it by finding my community on campus. Um, I can definitely resonate with the narrative that you are the only woman in the room. Um, when I was in community college, I remember being one of three girls in a whole lecture hall. Um, and it it is like um, hard to, it is like pretty difficult to um, be outnumbered by your male counterparts, but just remember like why you are there. It's because you enjoy the subject. It's, and, and also being there, taking up space, you are empowering so many other young women to follow in your footsteps. So a lot of people know what coding is and like what computing is and software engineering is, but not a lot of people know what data science exactly is. So could you share with us some insight into how the world of data science as a career looks like? And what could I possibly expect being a data scientist? Yeah, um, I feel like not a lot of people know what data scientists do on the daily. So this is a great question. Um, so I, um, I'm on Etsy's product analytics and strategic finance team, but I support a pro I support two product squads. Um, and basically for my PMs, I, they re have analytics requests. Um, oh, well, overall, let me start over. Um, I have three tiers of work at Etsy. Um, I have an 
ad hoc analysis for my product squad that I mentioned. Um, I have ad hoc analysis for my um, broader Etsy. And then I also have exploratory analysis for um, broader Etsy. Um, and what a day to day looks like is me having two to three meetings with stakeholders that could be my product manager um, that could be engineering managers um, or my analytics manager um, and most days like today i had a focus day so that's dedicated time um, uninterrupted to code um, and my job is very sql heavy sometimes i'll use R and um, Python, but only for experimentation. Um, I read a lot of documentation since I was a new hire not too long ago. Um, and on a weekly basis, I update my team on weekly metrics. Um, and right now it's a really exciting time because we just finished our discovery for an experiment and now we're ramping our experiment. Um, so. Yeah, that's also um, the difference between a data analyst versus data scientist. Data analysts don't really code, they um, analyze data, historical data, but data analysts, data scientists work more with predictive analysis and experimentation. Well, that's so interesting. <laughs> um, hmm, so for next question, I feel like this is also an interesting one. Um, how was your journey to get to the workspace that you are right now? Yeah, um, so I actually didn't get a job right out of college. I um, graduated in June, but I was applying for jobs since March of last year. And um, I applied to over 150 job listings until um, I had that one yes. All it takes is that one yes. Um, and I, yeah, it's the, the technical um, interview is so hard, but like it only takes that one yes. And then after you have that one yes and your first job, you'll have recruiters coming to you. Um, but for the data science interview process um, and how I landed my job, I first had a uh, phone screen with the recruiter. This was after I applied to the job listing. And then I had a technical interview with my hiring manager. Um, I also had um, a virtual offsite with different members from the team I would be working with. Um, usually that's an onsite interview, but this was during COVID. So it was virtual and um, it was like five different behavioral interviews with a product manager, another analytics manager, um, um, other data scientists on the team, um, because you, on the day-to-day -day you work so much with your senior data scientist. Um, and my last behavioral interview was with the senior recruiter. Um, and out of all the companies that I, was applying for, I felt like Etsy had the most seamless interview process. Um, so I signed with them. Uh, I signed my offer like um, within the time that I applied for the job posting. And when I signed for the offer was a month. Um, so that's how I landed my first job um, at Etsy. Um, and yeah, from, from that whole experience, like I, I, I felt like it was so exhausting and like just so, um, yeah, just so exhausting. And it can be um, hard on your heart to like have so much rejections. But um, my biggest takeaway from this whole interview process is rejection is just redirection. All your achievements are super impressive, and I'm really like surprised by how you applied to 150 different jobs, right? So what is your vision of your future in STEM? My vision uh, for my future in STEM, um, within the next three to five years, my best friend and I, we have a lot of net 
uh, a lot of our network in San Francisco are founders. Um, they've been through um, YC before, which is a startup incubator. Um, so we want to have our own startup within the next three to five years. And right now we're just planting the seeds for our startup, um, brainstorming, and um, also like making those connections at the jobs that we have now. Um, I at Etsy, they have coffee chats with executive team because I never really interact with the executive team because I'm just um, an individual con contributor. Contributor, but um, I sign up for these coffee chats even though not a lot of people do because I want to put my face in front of these executives because these executives could be your future investors and um, you like really want to know like how they got to where they are. So um, that's how I envision myself in the next three to five years. Um, I really love my team and the culture at Etsy. So I do see myself here until I do my own thing. That's so amazing. I really hope that how you envision yourself really comes true and that even bigger, better opportunities and lessons come into your life. <laughs> um, some other questions I would have. Uh, what advice would you give to those who right now feel uncomfortable being surrounded in the STEM field, uh, by the STEM field, and the misconception about it being directed towards the male community? Oh, may you read the question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what advice would you give to those who right now feel uncomfortable um, pursuing uh, a STEM career or a career in the STEM field and the misconception about it being directed towards the male community. Um, yeah, like I said before, community is everything. Never underestimate the power of community. Um, something that I did to not let the pressures of a male dominated field get to me was find a mentor. Um, I found multiple mentors through Built by Girls. They have a WAVE program. It's free. Um, you meet with a mentor that um, works for big tech or any of your like dream companies um, within three months. And um, that really helped me um, see different perspectives um, when applying to jobs and um, and yeah, I still keep in touch with a lot of the mentors that I had um, before. Um, I used to intern at a startup, a very early stage startup. There is really only six employees, but that meant I got to work really closely with the CTO and she became one of my mentors and now one of like my closest friends. So making those connections and having um, someone that would vouch for you and um, remember you when an opportunity arises. What advice would you give to your younger self, to the Marisa Delgado that was about to enter college and didn't have the full picture that you have now? I would tell my uh, younger self that soft software engineering is not the only path in tech, there are so many um, job families, even within data science. Data science, there's data engineering, um, machine learning engineer, um, a generalist data scientist like I am. Um, being a woman in technology can look so many different ways. I remember when I um, transitioned from being a CS major to an information technology major, I had beaten myself up so much about that, but being a woman in STEM can look so different um, and it doesn't always have to end up being a software engineer. Okay, that's so amazing. Uh, those are some of the questions that we have. I don't know if somebody else would like to also maybe raise their hand and ask Marisa some questions about what she just shared with us. Um, if that's not the case, then we also have here some questions that you put in the registration form. So please, if anybody has a question or would like to ask Marisa herself, <laughs> um, please. Okay, yeah. Um, go ahead. 
There's actually one question in the chat right now. Stacy oh. asks, what's your highest incentive on a day where you just don't feel right? Yeah, there, there are definitely those days um, where it can be difficult. And especially as women, we juggle so many different titles um, that, um, yeah, some days that you feel like all the pressure and the weight is on your shoulders. So um, what I do to um, make sure that I am balanced and happy is to come to come back to my sacred rituals. I learned this from one of my mentors. Um, so every day I make sure to exercise, to meditate, um, to um, also read a book, just um, getting back to your sacred rituals leaves more room for you to be focused on your work um, and be your, and show up as your highest self at work too. Does anyone else have any other questions? Oh, okay, hi. So, can you hear me? Yes, I could hear. And how do you pronounce your name? Pragya. Pragya? Yes. Okay. Sorry about this. I got sinus thing. So. Oh, no worries. <laughs> so, You're okay. Um, yes. So you do uh, like a lot of things. You're a data scientist. You do modeling. Are you a procrastinator sometimes? Oh, in school, I was, oh my God, like I was such a procrastinator. And, um, but at the same time, I'm also like a very, um, type a person like I schedule everything um to the hour and like I google calendar is my best friend my planner um is also my best friend um so my biggest like tips for a pro for if you find yourself procrastinating a lot is to um yeah have a good time management system so I I give myself time blocks in my Google Google Calendar, um, but I also give myself um, like leeway and like space and buffer to accomplish tasks. Um, I feel like if you're very rigid in your time blocking um, for your every day to day, that um, you end up like procrastinating and. Um, and when you're not like focusing on just one thing, um, you can also end up procrastinating because, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really believe in multitasking. Um, so yeah, having a really good time management system is the best way to tackle procrastination. Okay. Thank you. I feel like Notion is really good. Like if anyone has heard of that. Okay, we'll end up this webinar with one last question from a chat from Eleanor. So she asked, how would you stay motivated to do tasks you dislike? For tasks I dislike, um, I sometimes don't like um, doing write-ups because I, I'm like more gifted in math and science, not so much in um, reading and writing, um, but I'm trying to get better at it. Um, for tasks I don't like, I see, I like to change my mindset that it's actually like challenging me um, to become a better like technical writer. I, um, as a data scientist, um, a quality that people overlook is being a great storyteller. So um, doing these write-ups that I dislike is really just challenging me to become a better storyteller, um, which is all in all better for my stakeholders too. I think we also have uh, some questions. Maybe we can uh, give some time for them. So, Monica, would you like to go ahead? Yes, um, I want to turn on my camera. Uh, can you see me and you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, well, uh, hi, uh, I'm from Mexico. And I have a question and because here in Mexico, it's a little bit um, difficult to uh, sending out of the in this world of the science and because of being a woman and mm -hmm. my question is um where could you recommend to the girls who are starting in the world of science 
to be able to continue with the dream of being like engineering or all of this? Because here it's a little bit difficult to say, you know, in the... Right, I could imagine. Um, something that, this is also a problem in the Philippines, um, have, having more women in technology and um, having more technology in general in the Philippines, um, which is where my family is from. Um, and one thing that my friend did, she created a nonprofit at in, in Manila um, to teach young girls how to code. But I feel like there is there must be like a nonprofit like that for Latinas in tech. Um, and something that I did dur the, during the pandemic is like find my community online. Um, and there's such a huge woman in tech community. Um, I think there's an, also an Instagram for Latinas in tech. I will try to find that and send it out. Um, but yeah, finding that community is really helpful. Um, but for breaking into tech, are you um, an engineering student? Well, I'm 17, so I'm going to start the university. And well, I have a lot of friends that want to get into this of the science and engineering and I want to be an industrial engineering so I am into this. <laughs> Very cool yeah well first of all um, it's it's great that you already know like what your goals are and you're working towards them um, so hopefully you can pursue industrial engineering in college um, but outside of college finding internships finding um, joining um, so for me, I joined Girls Who Code, but another organization for, um, if you could find something similar um, for industrial engineering, a lot of these programs are free um, and, and they're supporting women of color um, like us. So, um, and if you can't find those organizations, I, what I did, um, in between my uh, graduating college and my first job at Etsy was do a boot camp online. Um, you can also write what I did. Like I applied for financial aid and Coursera is really lenient on that. You like copy and paste it from um, Reddit, LOL. And um, you can get financial aid approved, but you can also, um, yeah, gain, um, gain skills and build your skills get skill set on Coursera. Um, one of my favorites is the Google um, professional certificates on um, Coursera. So I highly recommend taking that. Thank you a lot. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, so I think we also have Tanisha. You can go ahead and ask me a question. Hi, Marisa. Um, I'm Tanisha. I'm also a TIM major at UCSC. So it's really cool to hear your story because I'm also on a similar path. Um, my question isn't tech related. I was just curious on how you started modeling. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I um, So I did pageants six years ago. I did my first pageant, um, Miss Pacific Coast Teen USA. I ended up winning and one of my clothing sponsors um, asked me to model for them um, for free. And um, so I did. And when they posted me on their Instagram, my mother agent found me from there. Um, and I never really thought I would get into modeling um, be just because I was in college at the time and I didn't think I had the bandwidth to do that. But um, it turned out to be one of the greatest experiences. Like I um, got to be independent, move across the country myself, got to be more um, financially independent as well. So it really um, has made me the person that I am today. Um, and yeah, that's how I got into modeling. Um, but you can always like DM me if you also want to get into the space. It's really cool that you're also a slug. Um, I, I feel like I never meet people from UC Santa Cruz. Um, but yeah, like also drop in the chat where you're coming from because there's someone from Mexico here. There's someone from Santa Cruz. I feel like there's so many, you guys are from all over the place. Wow, Singapore, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, in Revolution I stand we're like from all over the place. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Top of my bucket list is to go to Lake Bam. 
in Canada. Um, so very cool. Wow, Columbia. I do, I do pageants on the side and they always send the best um, contestants from Columbia. I think Eleanor has a question. You have your hand raised. Oh, um, yeah. Hi. So, hi, um, I'm Eleanor and I really enjoyed your presentation. So, uh, I'm a student and I'm thinking of getting in the engineering field too. So, what advice do you have for students? Uh, what, what age, if you don't mind, Matt? me asking like are you in high school or are you in college oh yeah sorry about that uh, i'm 15 years old in high school <laughs> um and to get into engineering like do you do you know what type of engineering you are most like attracted to or aligns with your values mm, well i think that aerospace engineering is fun because i want to like build rockets and planes but like I also think software engineering is cool but but like after listening to your presentation I think that maybe it's not as well as I thought oh my god no I'm not like bashing software engineering. yeah I know but um I just like I told um Monica joining these programs that they offer for high school students like Girls Who Code. Um, I think NASA has an internship program for college students, not for um, high schoolers, but like finding these programs outside of school um, will really help because um, honestly, I didn't build my data science skill set at Santa Cruz. Um, I did, I learned everything from my internships. So, it really matters what you do outside of school. So it, it can be a su simple Google search of um, pro programs for high school students um, in aerospace engineering or in software engineering. Oh, thank you so much. And also a follow-up question. I remember you were talking about like Coursera. So are there any online courses you recommend high school students to take as well? Ooh, for high school students. Um, wow, you guys are thinking about this really early and I love it. Um, what I did in high school was um, I like joined hackathons. If your high school offers that, I would do that for um, Coursera. I feel like they're very high school friendly, but they might be like too advanced for um a high schooler. So maybe like joining clubs on campus that are um, woman engineering focused. Um, but yeah, I suggest the Google professional certificates on Coursera and you can apply for financial aid. So they're free. Um, and yeah, most of most of the resources that I know are like data science related. Um, so let me know if you want those as well. Oh, well, I, I think I'll uh, do the Google search myself, but thank you for sharing me about this. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for agreeing to be a speaker in our webinar series. Your work for women in STEM is absolutely astounding. And with that, we can conclude this webinar. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to direct them to RevSTEM so that we can contact Marisa or just DM her on Instagram. So yeah, that's all. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So much, Marisa. Bye. Thank you.